That's a very huge point you made about scale and variance. I think that mm -hmm. for the people out there that don't know, it just means that what is small can be made to be big. Like the things, and it'll mm -hmm. function and it'll act the same way. So what mm -hmm. this means mm -hmm. in theory is that even an atom can be scaled up to something mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. large. Mm -hmm. And I think the connection there is something called Bose-Einstein condensate, which is basically making atoms act coherent, super fluidic, as though they're acting as one overall structure. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I've read a lot of or some papers um, about how they've been able to stabilize the plasmas. And there, it seems to be that they use this vortical motion as one option. And another way is like a squeezing a plasma. And that's how they can make these ball lightnings like stable mm -hmm. so they don't just dissipate. And In the laboratory. Yeah. In the yeah. laboratory to make ball light. Artificial. Yeah, okay. Yes. Artificially yeah, yeah. produced. Okay. Yeah. And so they figure it out. If they do the math, they just run the numbers. They can figure out, oh, the plasma is creating its own electromagnetic fields. And if we move the plasma around the right way, we can, you know, cancel out these fields. And then we can, if we have this either vortical motion or squeezing type state happen, that it will do what you said in terms of the waves it, and it creates a standing wave, a standing wave mm -hmm, so that mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. it's perfectly inside of this, the field that you're trying to create. Yes. yes. And this reminds me, all of what we just discussed reminds me of something called cymatics, which mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. sound creating just structure and shapes. And when you look at them, I, I don't know if you have, what are your thoughts on cymatics and the shapes that get produced at various tones? Because it then takes this idea of resonance and you put like, you know, if people aren't familiar, you put sand on like a metal sheet and they hit it with certain mm -hmm. uh, frequencies and these shapes form. But it's not just like a triangle. It'll be like a circle and then like kind of half circles on the outside, like very complex it, shape it, form. So do you think that's just like a combination of lower form sacred geometry shapes? Yeah, my first guess is that yeah, we're looking at sort of a a, a macro cosmic or material layer that's that's uh, conformal to these patterns of the pet, but but all the the material, whether it's sand or diatomaceous earth, whatever it is, is simply revealing the patterns of energy that are there, mm. right? Mm. And and even if you if you cleaned off the plate, the vibrations are on those energy patterns are still there. So I think, yeah, I, I, absolutely. I, I think that you could go another level with that, and it's that's a very intriguing question you're asking there, Ashton, because perhaps that is uh, the line of thinking, is that uh, the plasmas are cohering to patterns of energy that you know are, are, would ordinarily be invisible, but under the certain circumstances, if you bring in two vibrating systems and they're in resonance, you can have this effect at a distance, which seems to be one of the most interesting phenomena associated with that. Um, so yeah, I, I think you're on the right track and I would love to talk about that further. Um, yeah, I haven't experimented, I've witnessed people doing cymatics. I've never really done it myself or studied into it. So I couldn't tell you, you couldn't show me a pattern and yeah. then I would be able to tell you, okay, that is this is particular frequency. Um, yeah, and it's not, can... I think the, the idea is a lot of this stuff are more of just like to understand the concepts and then imagine what could be. You know, it's like, okay, so now I realize uh -huh. we, can, we have this self-organizing property that happened. And then to your point, you're saying, well, when we're dealing with these plasmoids, it's self-organization that we're seeing. So how do we explain that? Well, we look at cymatics and we see self-organization happen at specific frequencies. We just use, you know, general physics and waves and we go, oh, standing waves could be what we would need for that as well. Um, mm -hmm. And with plasma, something, I don't know if you are familiar with a guy named Ken Shoulders. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Ken yes. I, I got introduced know. to him through through Bendel. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of people who have been researching his work, and I think that his work might be the secret basis for cold fusion. Um, yeah, and yeah, I could. I... So what he found, he found that he could just keep these the charges separated. And the question people should be asking is, if I have a plasma, and a plasma is just an amorphous blob like a gas, 
If I were to mm -hmm. separate positive and negative charges, what would I think should happen? They should come back together. They should equalize. And if it's just a gas, mm -hmm. then theoretically nothing should be stopping that from happening. Like that should just happen very quickly. But that's where Ken Shoulders comes into play. Ken Shoulders found, no, for some reason, these, these negative electri electron charges are clustering together. When normally you would think they should just immediately dissipate and the plasma should just neutralize. Mm -hmm. And the crazy part about this is that if you can take that effect and scale it up, now you're making like a literal like Zeus, like lightning, like, you know, that you can just strike down on a people. And especially if you can stabilize it. Now it's like, okay, well, I can just send it on somebody if I, if I want, you know, that, that to me mm -hmm. seems kind of scary. Do you think something like that is feasible? And then do you think the universe in general, like, do you believe in electric universe or plasma universe theories? To the extent that I understand it, it sounds like there are elements of it that are plausible, but I haven't, up to this point, I have not really needed to, to, to go there, although I get asked so often that I feel like I need to take a dive into it and really try to come away from it with some basic understanding. Absolutely, though, hell yes, the, the, the definitely electrophenomena, electromagnetic phenomena is key to pretty much everything. 